What's going on, y'all? Thanks for checking in the Cali's Take. You know what to do. Hit that like, subscribe button. Also hit that notification bell just so you can get the newest and the bonus content first. But hey, let's just go ahead and jump right in. You know, I've said it before. It would be a dumb move for the Clippers to make if they let go of certain players on the roster. Because certain players on the roster make up the culture. Certain players on the roster is the culture. And I'm not saying that for every player that plays for the Clippers, but the ones that have been there, the ones that contribute consistently, those are the ones you have to find a way to reward. And the easiest way to reward them <clears throat> is to keep them, plain and simple. You know, the Clippers, they have a good team. They have a really scary team. They have a team that can win it all next year. And if adding a point guard is the only thing they need to do, well, that's something they can probably easily do this offseason. They might not get the best point guard in the league, but they have enough assets to find a way to get a point guard. And that's fine with me. And adding a big man is fine. But don't take away the culture that you have. Don't take away the valuable pieces that you have. I mean, Luke Kennard, Luke Kennard is one of those players to me on the Clippers that they can't trade right now. And they, I don't think they should trade anytime soon, if you ask me. I mean, it's a dumb move if the Clippers go through with this because Luke Kennard, to me, was one of the unsung heroes for the Clippers this past season when they had no Kawhi and no PG. The guy was one of the best three the top three top two three-point shooters in the league last year represented the Clippers in the all-star break and I mean he was one of the the guys that was consistent for the Clippers last year the games that he played and he was you know a, a big reason why several of those big game comebacks they had last year was due to him I mean, along with others on the team, too, but due to him because of his big shot heroics and, you know, hitting game winners and stuff like that, you can't trade Luke Kennard. I mean, to me, it's a dumb move. And as I said before, certain players just have value that others don't. They're looking at trading Luke Kennard, their best shooter, probably on the team. And they're not even looking at Marcus Morris right now. Marcus Morris should be the first one up to go or the first one up in trade talks in regards to, you know, putting the sources out there of looking for a place for him to land, not Luke Kennard. First of all, when you look at the league right now, well, let's just do this. Let's look at the, the team who just won the championship, the Golden State Warriors. The reason why they're such a good team, because they have a lot of spacing, a lot of shooters and a lot of scores. There's always room for scores. There's always room for shooting. I mean, of course, Luke Kennard's minutes might go down a little bit with the addition of Norman Powell, because Norman Powell is a swing man. He's going to come off the bench or however they may utilize him, and he's going to, you know, get his minutes. But still, Luke Kennard is still a great shooter. Luke Kennard is still somebody who can come in and impact the game. I mean, and like I said, you can never have enough shooting. If you got to go against a team like the Golden State Warriors in a seven-game series, you're going to wish you had a player like Luke Kennard. I mean, I've heard, you know, sources tell me and reading other sources that, you know, they're looking into a player like Karis LeVert, you know, like I spoke on before. But Karis LeVert doesn't make up for a Luke Kennard to me because Karis LeVert is the type of player that the Clippers really don't need. I mean, they got enough guys who can put the ball in the basket in regards to, you know, all around game. And what I mean by that is all around Luke Kennard is just a shooter mainly or he's looked at as just a shooter. He's not looked at as a guy who can put the ball on the floor and take it to the rack and, you know, um, you know, dunk on people or, you know, go into the paint and, you know, make layups or tough layups over, you know, um, highly skilled big men defenders. He's not looked at as that. He looked at as a spot up shooter. And Karis LeVert, if they were actually looking into getting him, he he can put the ball on the floor, score in a multitude of ways, and he can knock down a three pretty good as well. You know, so that's all around scoring. So to me, the Clippers don't need that. You got two of the best wings in the NBA in, in Kawhi and PG. Then you got a swing man coming off the bench in Norman Powell who can score in a multitude of ways. 
You see what I'm saying? So you got scorers who can get to the rack in a multitude of ways. Then you got Reggie Jackson who can score in a multitude of ways. So this is what I'm saying. You already have players like that. It's no need to go after a player like uh, uh, just hypothetically, I, I think Karis LeVert would be a good fit for the Clippers, you know, in regards to if they got him, but I don't think they should give up a piece like Luke Kennard, you know, for him because Luke Kennard fits the system even better because around Kawhi and PG, they need shooters. They have enough guys who can put the ball on the floor and get to the basket anytime they want. They need they need guys who can spot up and shoot. That's what makes the Clippers unique. That's what's going to make the Clippers a, dy a dynamic team because of the spot up shooting that they have along with the the, the, the all-around players that they have that can put the ball on the floor and score the ball a multitude of ways, shoot threes, free throws, all the above. You see what I'm saying? They got Kawhi, they got PG, they got Norman Powell, they got Reggie Jackson, they got guys that can do things like that. So Karis LeVert, I mean, if they delete um, Luke Kennard and add Karis LeVert, you're just adding another guy who can do what most of your other guys or, or your main guys can do so it's like to me you need guys that can spot up and shoot and stretch the floor if Kawhi and PG is on the floor because it makes them more dangerous and it makes the floor more open for them to operate the way they like to if you add another all-around type player or all-around type scorer like Karis LeVert and he's to take Luke Kennard's place hypothetically that's not going to work well because like I said, you know, when he comes in the game, of course he can score all around, but they already have players that can do that. Why not just have a bunch of spot up shooters surrounding Kawhi and PG and allow them to operate on the floor anywhere they want to at any time they want to. And then at times when if they're, if they're getting double teamed, kick it out to a shooter or throw it into the big man like Zubak or Hardenstein and let them work in the paint. I mean, that's the perfect operation to me. I don't feel like they should let go of Luke Kennard because he stretches the floor just how they need it. And on top of that, his services are even, you know, manageable on the defensive end because he's he's helped cause turnovers, took charges. You know, he does the little things like that. You see what I'm saying? And he's feisty on defense as well. And like I said, he's a part of the culture. If you're going to add a player like Karis LeVert, add him to the team. Don't take away a player like um Luke Kennard because you need shooters because when you look at like I said the Golden State Warriors won the championship Jordan Poole Splash Brothers I mean you know Andrew Wiggins you know whatever the case may be Andrew Wiggins really isn't like a great great shooter but I mean he can shoot he can stretch the floor I mean he can do that he can knock down threes you see what I'm saying you need shooters you need guys who can really stretch the floor when you got two dynamic wings like Kawhi and PG you don't necessarily like even if they didn't get Karis LeVert hypothetically they'll be fine with what they have they don't even really need Karis LeVert I just think it'd be a good additional piece if they were able to acquire him but I don't think you should take away any major pieces for him unless it's like somebody like Mark Marcus Morris, who really wants to go, who, who's who been saying in tweets, who's been speaking aloud lately that he really uh, is looking elsewhere in so many words and wants to play with his brother and all these other type things. He's the one speaking that he wants to leave. He's the one you should be going after, not Luke Kennard. That's one of the best three point shooters in the league. You're not going to top three point shooters in the league don't grow on trees. They don't they don't happen every day. So it's like when you have a and to me, Luke Kennard could be the best three point shooter in the league percentage wise this season. He can because, like I said, he's going to get even better looks than what he got last season, because last season he was more crowded. He was more, you know, um, thought of in regards to the offense because they didn't have Kawhi and PG. So now he would be more of an afterthought on offense because they got so many other weapons and Kawhi and PG stepping back into the mix. So that would allow Luke Kennard to come out there and play freely and give him a lot more wide open looks than, than even what he had last year. So he might even shoot a higher percentage going into this season. And like I said, this league is all about shooting. You need shooters. You need guys who can put the ball in the basket surrounding your superstar players on your team. And if the Clippers trade away Luke Kennard, it's a dumb move. It really is. And it's going to come back to haunt them unless they get somebody comparable to him who can space the floor just as he can. And look, Karis LeVert can't shoot the way Luke Kennard can. He can do a lot of things offensively. But like I said, you know, 
They already got guys who can score in a multitude of ways. It's a difference between guys who can score in a multitude of ways, and there's a difference between guys who just shoot. And Luke Kennard, he can put the ball on the floor surprisingly, you know, more than what people think, but he's mainly a shooter. So to me, those type guys are not replaceable, especially at this point in time, because the way the NBA is now, you need all the shooting you can get. And like I said, if they have to play a team like Golden State or somebody like that, which I'm pretty sure they will next year if, if they're going to go far, you're going to have to have guys who can space the floor. You, you can't have guys, who everybody who just puts the ball on the floor and get to the basket and don't have shooting around you because it's not going to work that way. Teams build walls. Teams come up with defensive schemes to you know draw charges, get the ball out of certain people's hands, things like that. You got to have guys who can catch and shoot. That's the reason why the Warriors won because they, they, they got guys who can put the ball on the floor and get to the basket but they got guys who can spot up and shoot and kill a team and kill a team's confidence that way so it's like to me the Clippers you're taking away a core piece a guy who helped you a lot last year when there was no Kawhi and PG and he was one of your main scorers along with Reggie Jackson to keep this team afloat and you're just going to trade him away and not even know what you're going to get in return that's a stupid move like I said Luke Kennard is a part of the culture if anybody needs to be traded or spot or, or thought of in regards to trade that the Clippers need to put to the forefront, it's Marcus Morris. It doesn't need to be Luke Kennard. And I'm telling you now, if they trade Luke Kennard and, and don't get nobody back comparable f in regards to, to, to what he does exactly, which is a spot up shooting, the Clippers are going to hurt for that because, like I said, shooting is where, is where it's at. I mean, that's what the NBA is about now. You need shooters surrounding your star players. Your star players can do it all, but the shooters specifically shoot, and that's what makes teams dynamic. That's what makes teams' offense flourish a lot more. And if you take away one of the best three-point shooters in the league, you can't be helping yourself if you're not going to replace him with somebody who is probably the best three-point shooter in the league. So, I mean... I just don't get the logic of the Clippers. I don't understand what they're doing. And, and if you look at this situation, they'll end up probably trading somebody like Luke Kennard and keeping somebody like Marcus Morris, who doesn't, who, who's, who's coming off at least as if like he doesn't even want to be there, which is a dumb move, which is very stupid. And this is why I say organizations got to, organizations got to learn to be smart. And this is why I said, if you're going to be smart, make smart moves. They got Jerry West in there. To me, Jerry West is, is one of those, you know, he well, when he was on the Lakers, he was one of the smartest, if not one of the best recruiters in the NBA. I mean, he put all the pieces around Kobe. He put all the pieces around Shaq or whatever, all that the time that he was there. He did all the right moves there. So if he's in charge of that, why is he letting go or even think about letting go of Luke Kennard? That doesn't even make sense to me. And like I said, if they let go of Luke Kennard, that can change a lot in regards to, you know, who they are as a team. Of course, they'll still be a great team. Of course, they'll still be a, a, a contender for a championship. But I'm just saying, losing certain pieces in a championship type on a championship type roster can hurt a lot of people may not see it now but certain pieces just need to be there as i said before the pieces they need to find a way to keep of course Kawhi and pg no doubt about that but you got to find a way to keep players like luke Kennard, terrence mann nicholas Batum. You see what I'm saying? Of course, they got, uh, you know, Norman Powell and um, Robert Covington. So, of course, you keep those players. You got to find a way to keep those type players around because those players, you know, basically make up what, what the team is about. Of course, Kawhi and PG is who they are. They're well established. They've been superstars, stars, whatever you want to call them, for the longest time now. But superstars don't win championships without certain players. And I can tell you, the last couple teams that has won championships, they got shooters around. They got shooters around them. When you look at Giannis last year, when he won the championship, he got Chris Middleton. You know, he got uh, Connaughton. You know, he got shooters around him. He got guys who can put the ball in the basket. You know, even Bobby Portis, you know, can can step out and shoot, you know, a lot better than people thought he could. You know, Brooke Lopez can step out and shoot threes. This is what I'm saying. You got to have shooters around your star players because they help develop and make up the offense and allow it to flourish and allow it to be well-rounded because it allows defenses not to collapse in the paint and wait for somebody to drive in 
when they got all them shooters out there waiting because if they do collapse in the paint or when you drive into the paint and they try to collapse on you, you kick it out to a shooter and they knock down the shot, it hurts the defense pride and their and their momentum every single time. And this is why I say it, you don't take away a top shooter in the league like Luke Kennard when predominantly every team you see in the NBA is predicated off of shooters. I mean, it's just it's, it's just it's just asinine. It's just dumb. And like I said, the Clippers, like I said, unless they're going to replace him. if OK, so last year, Luke Kennard was top two, top three, three point shooter in the league percentage wise. So unless they're going to replace him with the number one or number two, three point shooter in the league, unless they make that happen. OK, then maybe it's not that bad of a bad of an idea. I still think it is because I feel like Luke Kennard, you know, has um, done a lot for this team and um, has 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 elevated his game as well you see what i'm saying um you know so and then like i said last year looking at what he did for the team last year they can't repay him like this by trading him away to a team that's probably not even going to be a contender you see what i'm saying because it's, it's it's just dumb it's just dumb so hopefully they make a better decision and hopefully they make better decisions with an s in the off season because you know it's a lot of it's a lot of names out there a lot of situations out there. I understand that, but unless you're getting another another top three point shooter, or unless you're getting a superstar caliber type player, or maybe not a superstar, but at least uh, if you're gonna trade Luke Kennard to add a couple pieces, and hypothetically, let's say they got somebody like um, you know Bradley Beal, hypothetically, okay, then that's that that would be you know more than worth it. Matter of fact, that's a win win for you if you got somebody like that. But I'm just saying, I don't think they're gonna get somebody like that. But even still, like I said, certain players just don't need to be traded i said last year you know um serge Ibaka was another body i felt like they could have kept around but i mean they end up letting him go and um of course you know it didn't um i guess it didn't help or hurt but i mean i definitely think he could have assisted you know in regards to you know the rest of their season and trying to help them you know better themselves and maybe they would have made the sixth seed and instead of the playing tournament you never know and then on top of that you know as far as luke Kennard, i mean Think about it. The way Luke Kennard played last year, if Luke Kennard actually played in the playing tournament, especially in that New Orleans game, I think the Clippers come out with that victory if Luke Kennard plays because that's an extra shooter that they would have had that would allow them to get over the hump. They already had like a 10 point lead in that game or something like that, you know, with several minutes to go in the fourth quarter and they gave up the lead and, you know, those Pelicans won, rest is, the, the rest is history. But if they would have had a player like Luke Kennard, even without Paul George in that game, against New Orleans Pelicans in the playing tournament. I think the Clippers still win that game because Luke Kennard makes that type of an impact. He can shoot. He can put the ball on the floor better now than what he could a couple seasons ago. And he's trusted by Ty Lue to go out there and execute the plan. And when you have players like that, you got to find a way to feed them. You got to find a way to keep them because they already shown you that they've served value for your team. You know, these other players, Norman Powell and Robert Covington, I do like them and I do like the acquisition of them being on the Clippers, but they haven't really proven anything yet because they haven't played a full season with the Clippers. They haven't played, you know, with Kawhi and PG yet to see if they really fit with the operation and the culture that they're trying to build or implement in um, L.A. right now in regards to the Clippers. So, I mean, Luke Kennard has already shown that he fits with this team. He's shown that he's gritty. He's tough. He's shown that he could put the ball on the floor of need he's shown that he can help he, he's actually shown he can help lead this team you know to some victories if they need him to at times he's actually shown that because a couple of those 25 35 point uh deficits they were down last year he was one of the main reasons why they came back and won them so i mean he's shown his type of value to this team before you had robert covington and norman powell so you can't turn your back on a player like luke Kennard. and i'm telling you if they do for some reason i feel like it's just going to come back to hurt them because little and i always say the intangibles the little things is what comes back to hurt you in the long run people may not see it now but trust me a player like luke Kennard is valuable and the clippers you know um unless the clippers are going to replace him with a better three-point shooter or a better overall like uh player in regards to somebody with a, a bigger name than luke Kennard. 
um, then I'm not I'm not for it. Personally, I wouldn't trade him anyway. I would trade Marcus Morris and get somebody like Karis LeVert or maybe somebody better and add a couple picks in there. I personally would do that. I wouldn't even trade Luke Kennard if it was me. But hey, you know, the Clippers, they do what they want to do. It's their organization. It's whatever at this point. Um, hopefully they don't make any more. Uh, hopefully they don't have any more suggestions in regards to anybody else that, you know, means value for the team. Hopefully they end up keeping Luke Kennard and all their value players and maybe add to the team of what they need rather than get rid of something that they need or that they already have but hey that's my take on everything leave any comments in the comment section check out my other videos as always and hey cali out